project, I'll be using a Dollar Tree planter pot. Now, if you can't find one of these at your local Dollar Tree, you can use any other kind of pot that you can find. This is a metal pot that I found at the 4th of July, and something like this would work just as well. I'm also going to be using this lid from this Christmas container. I'm not going to need the bottom part, just the lid for this project. I really like the detail of the scallops along the edge of the lid. I'll also be using two Dollar Tree candlesticks. Now, if you can't find this particular one at your Dollar Tree, any candlestick will do. I'll also be using some rope. Now, this rope was actually from Walmart because my Dollar Tree was out of the nautical rope. And then I'll also be using some of the black nylon rope from Dollar Tree. Now these florals are from Dollar Tree and I love getting them each year. They have different colors like pink, white, and yellow, but I really like the white. I'll be using a scrap piece of foam board and some yellow craft paint by Waverly in the color Maze. And also I'll be using some white craft paint. You can use any white craft paint that you have on hand. I'll also be using a tub of this Dollar Tree spackle. As you can tell here, half of my planter container is already um, halfway finished. I just wanted to make sure that it had time to start drying. Now I'm going to mix that spackle up really well, and then I'm going to add some of my white craft paint. I like to add paint to my spackle because it makes it easier to work with and it also sticks better. Now you can add any color of paint you want to your spackle for any project that you're working on. Once you get that paint mixed into your spackle really well, you're going to take your craft stick and you're just going to start spreading it on your container like you would frosting and cake. Now you don't want this really thin, but you don't want it too thick. So you're going to go across your project just well enough to where it covers completely and you can't see the design of your container. So as you can see here, you can see the pattern underneath. That means it's way too thin. So you're just going to continue to add more and thicken it up over the whole pattern of the container. Once your container is completely covered, you're just going to smooth that out a little bit so that it's nice and smooth. Then you're going to start drying it with your hair dryer on high heat. You're going to keep drying it until it forms a skin, which means the outside of your spackle is starting to dry, but underneath is still wet. I found this bubble wrap over in the office supplies at the Dollar Tree. I thought it would be perfect for this project because it had the nice pattern of a honeycomb. I cut a piece of bubble wrap big enough for my project. Now, the spackle has that skin that we formed with the hair dryer on the outside, but is still wet underneath. So when I put that bubble wrap on and I start pressing it into the spackle, it's going to give us that honeycomb look when we take it off. And this is what it looks like when you remove the bubble wrap. You have this really nice texture that will be perfect for our beehive. I'm just going to use my hair dryer on high heat to kind of dry that spackle a little bit before I move to the next step. We're now going to start making the top of our beehive and I'm going to be using this nautical rope that I found at Walmart. I'm going to start in the center and add a good amount of glue and push that rope nice and firmly into the glue. I'm using my Dollar Tree spatula to help push that down so I don't burn my fingers. And I'm gonna continue this process all the way around until I fill up the whole bottom part of my container.
Once I cover the whole bottom, I'm going to take that rope and glue it to the top of the first layer. And I'm gonna continue that all the way around until I have my second layer. Once I curl that all the way around on my second layer to the center, I'm just going to glue it down nice and tightly in the middle. Then you're gonna weave it around one more time to finish your third layer. Once you've finished that, you can cut the rope off and you are finished with the top part of your beehive. This piece of jute that I'm gonna be using is also from the Dollar Tree, and it actually has wire in it. So I'm just going to fold a little piece and start twisting it and then cutting it off and gluing it to the top of my beehive. That way, if I wanted to hang the beehive, I could, and it also gives me a fun little place to start adding some of my details. This next rope I'll be using is the black nylon rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to spiral it around like I did the top rope on the beehive and I'm going to give the illusion of a little hole in the front of my beehive. At this point I realize my spackle is not dry enough to start gluing that rope on. Moving to the next step, I'm gonna take two pieces of this aluminum wire from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna cut it the exact same size and form it into the shape of a bee wing. I'm going to kind of straighten out the ends so that I can put those ends into the hole of this wooden bead. And now I'm gonna run a bead of glue all the way around the wire form and glue it on to my lace. Once I've got both pieces of my wire glued to the lace, I'm gonna take my scissors and trim around the wing form. Now you've got these adorable lace wings for your bee. I'm gonna take a wooden bead and I'm going to add some hot glue to the center and I'm going to stick the wire of our wing form into the one side of the hole and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm going to take my second bead and I'm going to glue it onto the first bead, making the head of my bee. Just adding some hot glue, leaving the hole to the bead at the very top. That way I can take some of my jute and add some little antennas. I decided to add a pearl to the very bottom just to give it some visual interest. So I'm also going to glue that with my hot glue and leaving the hole to that bead at the very bottom so that I can put a piece of wire in, adding a little stinger. I'll be using that aluminum wire to cut the tip off, gluing it into the hole of the pearl, making a little stinger. Here I'm just showing how you'll twist that black nylon rope to make the little hole on your beehive. I had to wait to glue it on because my spackle was not completely dry. I'm taking a scrap piece of bone board and I'm gonna cut it into a hexagon shape, giving the look of a piece of honeycomb. Now I'm going to sand it with my sanding block and I'm going to use some of that spackle to cover this honeycomb piece just like we did the beehive and hit it with my hair dryer to put that layer of skin over the top so we can press the bubble wrap into it. We're gonna press the bubble wrap into this spackle just like we did the beehive, leaving the impression of the bubble wrap. I already gave this piece of honeycomb a base coat, but I'm using that yellow Waverly paint in the color Maze. And I added some white paint to a little bit of it so that I could give it some definition. So part of the honeycomb is gonna have a light yellow, and then the edges will have the darker original color of yellow. 
Now drying it with my hair dryer on high heat to make sure that paint is thoroughly dry. Now I'm gonna be using this Waverly Antiquing Wax to go around the edges of my honeycomb just to give it some definition and kind of finish it off. You really wanna blend that wax into your piece of foam, getting all the edges and then just really blending it well so that it doesn't look like you painted it, but it just looks like you've highlighted it. So now I'm going to dry my wax, but instead of using the high heat, I'm gonna use the cold shot on my hair dryer to prevent the wax from melting. Here I'm just trying to decide where I want to put the honeycomb when I'm finished. I did end up putting it at the top of my honeycomb instead of here on the side. I'll be using this candlestick to use as the base of my stand. Then using my hair dryer on high heat to completely dry that first layer. I'm going to go in with a second coat of paint. Now I'm going to hit it with my hair dryer one more time, completely drying the second coat. Now we'll start working on the candlestick. Even though it's already white, I wanna use the white chalk paint on it to give it the same texture and the exact same color. So I'm just gonna go in and paint the whole entire candlestick with the white Waverly chalk paint. I'm going to cut a piece of foam board the same size as the lid, gluing it on the inside so that when I glue it to my stand, it really gives it a nice firm base. This little stand is what I'll be setting the beehive on for display. I'm showing here where I'll be putting the hole for my beehive and then trying to decide where I want to place my bees and my honeycomb. Now I'm collecting my scraps of ribbon and lace. Now I'm going to incorporate the scrap pieces of my lace and ribbon. Using this bigger ribbon, I'm just going to make a shoelace bow. Now I'm going to finish off the tails of my bow by using a dovetail method. And this is where you bend the ribbon in half and cut towards your hand, giving you this finished look. Taking all those scrappy pieces, I'm just gonna put them all together and using a piece of twine, I'm just going to tie them in the middle. Now I'll just clip all those loops and trim my ribbon to the size that I desire. Here I'm gluing on the scrappy bow and then I will glue on the shoelace bow on top of that. Now I'm just going to go in and trim the jute and the ribbon. I'll be using these Dollar Tree white berries and greenery. I think they'll look really pretty hanging down the sides. Here I'm gonna add some glue and lifting out my ribbon, I'm gonna start gluing those little white flower berries underneath the ribbon so you can't really see where I've glued it. I found these greens at Walmart for 97 cents. I really like adding different colors and different greens into my projects. So I'm gonna snip a couple pieces off and incorporate those in as well. I thought it would give it a nice spring vibe to add some of these white flowers. 
and they're a little bit big so is what I do is add a little bit of glue in the center and then kind of pinch them together to make the size a little bit smaller Dollar Tree has these stickers that have really pretty flowers that would be great for this project as well. I love adding pearls to the center of my flower. So here I'm just adding a medium sized pearl to the center of that little white flower. I'm just playing around trying to determine where I want to place my bee and my honeycomb. Even though I thought this is where I wanted to place it, I ended up placing it in a completely different place in the end. Now at this point, you can add your little beehive to your stand and determine if you want to add anything to it. I wanted to add some moss to mine, so I will be adding some moss around the edges. You could add little rocks and stones or maybe little fairies from a fairy garden. Whatever you want to add, this would be the perfect time to add it. Here are some pictures of the finished project. Notice the details of the dripping honey made from hot glue. Thanks for watching, rethink fabulous, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell.